In this video, we are going to be discuss about the receivable management and inventory management. Both are very practical approach to manage day-to-day -day activities or operation of the business. This is important for retail store as well as production houses. If business is unable to manage receivables, it's difficult to manage the credit sales. As well as same, if business organizations are not able to manage the stores or inventories, they will suffer a lot. Sometimes they are getting a big losses due to that management. So let's come with me. We'll discuss about the whole scenario in our class. Account, Receivable and Inventory Management Let's start with the receivable management. Account receivable management refer to the set of policies, procedures and practices employed by a company with respect to managing credit sale. Account receivables are found on the balance sheet of a company and are considered a short term assets. So let's brief here as you know that account receivables are arising against the credit sale. It means once companies are offering credit sale to their customers, the account receivable is arised. An account receivable is an assets of the company. As you know that it is a short term assets and shown in a balance sheet assets column. So this is the scenario what you are very much aware. Now we have to be considered about the size of investment in account receivable. It is based various companies having a various type of account receivables. So it is based on percent on credit sale against total sale or we can say the to total sale. How much total sales we are having and what percentage companies are offering on credit sale. This is the one. Second level of sale. As you know that different type of organization have a different revenue means different sale. Like someone is in thousands, ten thousands, millions, billions as well as in trillions sales also available. So the percentage is reflecting about the level of sale. Terms of sale. Mostly different companies are having different terms when they are selling their products on or against credit. Quality of customers. This is very important parts when we companies are selling on credit, they know that they have to be checked the credit worthiness of the customers because the money will be come back in future. So if Customers are credit worthy, they will return the money as per the committed date as well as collection efforts. As you know that when we are talking about the quality customers, so it means if quality customers are there, may you will get the money on time as per the committed period. If not, maybe you have to make the efforts to call them, to mail them and so many things are there. We will discuss in the same video in other further slides. So let's continue. For understanding first term of sale. A sale is a transaction between two or more parties, usually buyer and a seller, in which goods or services are exchanged for money or other assets. Course as A divided by B and C. It means when companies are making term sale, they are balancing about A divided by B and C. Let's understand what is A, B and C here, where A means discount rate, offer on a credit sale if paid within B days, otherwise pays within C days without discount. So let's try to understand here the meaning of A, B and C. A is a discount rate. It means if companies are selling any goods up to the C days, they are giving one offer to the customers. They are offering that if you will return my money or company's money within the B days, you will get a percent discount. So this is a scenario of this is the terms. This is known as terms on sale. Let's understand through the example. For example, suppose the term of sale is 3 by 30 net 60 means discount rate is 3 percent if paid within 30 days. So it means customer if customer will be returned the company's money or corporation's money or firm's money within 30 days they will get 3% discount against their sale. 
otherwise they must be pay or they should be pay entire amount within the 60 days this is the condition this is the terms what customer and seller both discussed or both sign agreement so here we are focusing 3 by 30 net 60 this is important 3 means percentage 30 means the days they will get the percentage net 60 means showing that the sale is for 60 days in a continuation we will go through the understanding about this a b and c then how to calculate we will get to know that the terms of sale this terms of sale is also known as annualized opportunity cost of foregoing a discount this is maintaining that a divided by 1 minus a multiplied 360 divided by c minus b this is the formula what we are using to calculating the discount percentage what companies are offering to their customers so what actual percentage they are offering will calculate through the given formula suppose we'll go from the beginning uh, the previous slide example opportunity cost of foregoing 3 by 30 net 60 is given over there let's put the value in the given formula formula so 0 0.03 means 3 percent divided by 1 minus 0 0.03 multiplied by 360 divided by 60 total days minus 30 discounting days so the value will become 37.11 percent so opportunity cost for foregoing discount is 37 point 11% here. Now we'll go for inventory management. Inventory management refers to the process of ordering, storing, and using a company's inventory. As we know, keeping too much inventory is expensive and wasteful. And keeping not enough inventory can be result in a loss of sale. Types of inventory. There are three types of or we can say that stages that are commonly referred as raw material inventory. This is the total cost of basic materials which firms have in stock and we are using for a making a product but not yet used in a production operation. So raw material means the material what we are using to make another product, a new product that is a raw material inventory and the companies they are keeping that material in a store so that is known as raw material inventory the second type of inventory is also known as work in progress inventory this is a partial finished goods requiring additional work before becoming finished goods and the last finished goods inventory this is a completed products which are in a store means not yet sold it means product production is completed and Products are available in warehouse but is still not sold. So these are three types of inventory available mostly in all manufacturing or production based companies. Economic order quantity model. It is also known as EOQ model. The economic order quantity model is the number of unit that a company should add to inventory with each order to minimize the total cost of inventory such as holding cost, ordering cost as well as short storage cost. The EOQ model finds the quantity that minimizes the sum of these. Let's understand the economic order quantity formula. It is Q is equal to under root 2SO divided by C where Q is reflecting the EOQ means economic order quantity. Here we are trying to get to know that inventory order size in unit. It means how much inventory order is required when we are going to be order from the other companies or when we are going to be buy the raw material so what would be the size to minimize our cost or our optimal cost as the total demand in the units over the planning period mostly planning period is suppose one year so in one year how much units we are planning to buy this is the total number of units c per unit carrying cost it means each unit what we are going to be spend when we will carry the cost from carry the product from a one place to our company. O is ordering cost per unit. Let's try to understand through the example. For example, ABC firms want to purchase dollar ten thousand units. The carrying cost of 
one unit is dollar 1.25 and the order cost dollar 250 per order what would be the eoq or calculate economic order quantity let's go for the solution here eoq means q is equal to inventory order size in unit we need to know that which order we are going to replace in this way s is equal to total demand in units over the planning period as the question informed us we need 10000 units during the planning period c per unit carrying cost as per the question also we get to know that 1.25 dollar is a carrying cost same as we get to know that the ordering cost is dollar 250 per order let's put these values in the formula so eoq formula is here let's put the value q is equal to under root 2 multiplied by s means total number of units required in a planning period is 10,000 multiplied by o means ordering cost is 250 divided by c per unit carrying cost is 1.25 we need 2,000 unit in one order so eoq is telling us minimizing the cost if you want to minimize the cost we need to buy 2,000 units in each order this is a just a brief information about the receivable management and inventory management. Definitely I will bring more videos for understanding about the EOQ, how to calculate the total EOQ, how we are going to be identify the carrying cost, ordering cost in a further videos. Please like and subscribe and carry on my channel. Subscribe my channel. You will get all informations first and you will be, you will be benefited from it. Thank you very much for watching this video.